Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you one of the most disrespectful things you can do in Dark and Darker, and that is kill someone using the Buckler and the Shield Slam perk on the Fighter class. This was featured in my permadeath run, and a lot of you want to see more of it. So, I'm a man of the people. I'm going to show you guys one of my favorite runs, and part of the reason why I decided to try this on a permadeath setup. I thought it would have some hilarious moments. Unfortunately, we weren't lucky enough to find the buckler on my permadeath run, which unironically is the best option if you're going to be using sealed slam. And it does still allow you to block players if you can learn the block patterns and how to block weapons efficiently. Don't understand how that missed. Sometimes the spacing on shield slam can be a little strange, which makes it more difficult to learn. Which is why I prefer the buckler, because you're moving faster, you can get closer. And the animation just feels a little cleaner. Heater shield and round shield. Round shield's kind of a push. Heater shield's kind of an oddball sideways swing. And the buckler delivers a nice clean punch to the face. Only thing I wish would happen is they made it so it couldn't be blocked. And you couldn't get hit through the animation. So like people can swing literally through your shield as you're hitting someone with it. And it doesn't block their swing. I think it'd be so strong, and I mean, so strong, I mean, it would be good to use if you knew it was a guaranteed block on a weapon swing on top of a slow and some damage. 28 damage isn't horrible, maybe have some sort of scaling on it going forward, but if you had the ability to say like, look, hey, a Felling Axe Barb's coming, I see him swing, I'm gonna counter that with a Shield Slam and stop his attack, reduce his movement speed, and then switch back to my swords and mess this guy up. Or if you're running Sword and Shield Fighter, you have some sort of counterplay or variation you could make with your build. I never did that because I often went Slayer, which was all about speed, and oftentimes I found myself just wanting to chase down Rangers and Rogues, and the Buckler only has a minus 7 movement speed penalty, which allows me to sprint and chase them down, delivering a Shield Slam, which then also slows them, and oftentimes just deletes them from the lobby. I'm going to show you one of my runs with the Shield Slam in Goblin Caves before this new lobby system. I end up using Shield Slam a lot longer than I thought I was going to. It just, it's so satisfying when it hits. It's hilarious, it's funny, it's a great time, and I wanted to share another couple uh, moments that I thought were worth, um, worth your guys' time. I had a good laugh with it, and I didn't put it down quite as quickly as I thought I would. I'm not saying it's the most meta thing, I do think though with some small changes, could be potentially strong. Most fighters are using Sword and Shield anyway because it's your highest, basically your highest percent damage reduction totals you can get, stacking your armor rating. So if there's a way to drop Second Wind, I'm always looking for it. Maybe with a few changes, this is the skill that finally takes Second Wind off the fighter class. I think of all the classes, skill selection on fighter is probably the worst in terms of variation. And what's effective it's kind of a shame because i think of the fighter class of having a ton of options and being able to run around using multiple different setups jack of all trades sort of deal we hear a guy close by it sounded like a trap was set up and that means we might have a ranger to chase down and shield smash in the face something tells me the effect the bat gives you feels worse lately i don't know if it's just me it does feel a little a little more difficult to see things and orientate yourself. Take a couple arrows through the floorboards, which is nice. And then this guy looks like he wants to get real aggressive. As he's dancing around side to side, left and right, up and down. He is coming through that door. Try to slow his momentum a little bit. We smash him with the shield. And then switch back to our damage. Our damage items, which is our dual wielding setup. Looks like this ranger, or whoever it is in that other side, probably is aware that I'm hurt, and there may be some potential there for him to push me after that fighter barged in. We're using all the bandages we can, and I do really have faith in this setup to deal a lot of damage to a ranger if you can get on top of them. Even without shield smash, dual wield, slayer, uh, it's pretty much death for any ranger if they're in melee distance. Sometimes the ranger has a nicely placed strap, or they have a longbow which slows you on your charge towards them, but if you get on top of them with the Slayer set up, even when they have a spear, you're inside that spear's, like, hitbox, which means it's not doing quite as much damage, and Slayer just straight up destroys 
early leveled or lightly geared rangers. Yeah. I would have killed them anyway, even with Slayer, but we want them to go back to the main screen just guessing at what just happened to them. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I just got killed by a buckler. Like, <laughs> like, how bad does it get if you're, um, you're being hunted and chased down by literally a shield? Probably a feels bad moment for him, which is exactly what we're going for. Especially since rangers have been everywhere lately. It's either rogues or rangers that have been killing me. So, I'm okay with getting a little bit of revenge on them every now and again. And as you may have noticed, you can switch to a shield pretty friggin' quickly. Like, swapping back and forth happens super fast. If you have a couple throwables and a shield smash, I have tried this against teams. And there is times, like moments, where if you're against someone really tanky that's moving super slow, and they're not really expecting a buckler to the face, you can, at times, deliver a shield smash, get away from them, and then re-engage with your melee combat weapons. The problem is, by the time you do that, the two seconds is pretty much over. So yes, you've created a little bit of a gap for yourself, but then you're right into a melee fight anyway. So, it doesn't really have much value because the two seconds at, what, 20% I think, or 30% slow. It seems like a lot, but really as a solo player, you're not going to get much, much benefit from that slow. If you are in melee combat range, generally speaking, most classes aren't going to be that hurt by that. And you're going to be re-engaging almost immediately into melee combat again afterwards. Not to mention, you oftentimes will trade damage as you're shield smashing because the guy just doesn't know what you're doing and he's just swinging like a ma maniac. And other times you'll have a fully plated fighter with his shield up and you can't smash through it. So, it's incredibly difficult to pick your moments. And I wish they made it a little bit easier to get some sort of reward from using it, as we've already discussed. But if you were going to use this, the only way I see it being even slightly viable would be in a team, you have a huter shield or maybe a pavise, which I don't recommend pavise either, simply because I've been hit through them somehow and I still don't really know how it happens. And then, if you're using a huter shield maybe, you might be able to kite or peel for your squishier allies. Like if you have a wizard standing in the back line and you're basically just trying to keep the rogues off them, maybe. And that's like a, a hard maybe. Not right now. Probably not the best to use it. My most fun I've had, and you've probably seen this if you watched the short, is just dumpstering people with it on last hit because it's hilarious. I did fall in love with it for a few nights. Just like a passing compliment from a beautiful lady. The moment may be fleeting, but sticks with you for a long time. And that right there is why I thought it was just, just incredibly funny to end the fight. All that posturing and him doing his repost parries and stuff and trying to be a good longsword fighter. I just toss all all things aside and pull out the buckler to smash him in the face. So already I've used it on three players in this raid. And we're going to get in a little bit of a situation here with the rogue at the end. But generally speaking, you can be successful with just about anything in goblin caves if you're willing to just have fun. You don't need to always be full meta all the time. And I absolutely love the fact that I can just run into Goblin Caves now, level 1 to 15, and just enjoy myself. I am quite surprised with how much different the game feels, not being able to trade, and maybe I overlooked just how substantial and fun a change that could be. Never really considered that option, and truthfully, I feel like taking that trade out would be a massive change all across the board. But there's something to be said about that low gear, finding stuff yourself, and just raw lobby experience that isn't determined by whoever has the most golden keys and plus three all attributes still being around. It's kind of made things a little bit of a mess with the higher tier lobbies. So, Goblin Caves has been a great time. Even Runes has been a lot better considering it's duo queue. And yes, you do find a lot of rogues as I'm about to run into one here. I think overall we're starting to see some really good changes with balances and maybe, maybe Shield Smash will be amazing. This is that interesting little moment when you don't really know how to approach a rogue because it could be sitting in stealth for quite a long time. And if any of you have watched my permadeath stuff, it's often what ends my journey. 
throw that Molotov a little prematurely. I probably should have waited for him to try to open that portal. Then at least I know he'd be stuck for maybe a tick or two of damage from that Molotov. We play this little game of cat and mouse. I have the high ground, which is quite beneficial. And then, of course, this is the sketchy part where you just have no idea. He could be almost the whole way up that stairs and starting to make his way down this walkway. And he stayed still, waiting to throw a lantern at me in return, which is kind of odd, odd decision. I think he believes I'm just going to let him take this. Just not what I do with rogues. We whip a couple hits, but thankfully, thankfully I had a blue arming sword with dual wield and slayer. And the attack speed and damage you get is enough to deal with most rogues if they don't have the jump on you. And this last thing you're gonna watch is just randomly bumped into some guy that knew the channel, and we decided to duel. I thought it was hilarious. Once again, thank you all for watching. Really appreciate all the support, and I'll see you in the next permadeath journey. No, no, I'm full HP. Then you wanna fight? Oh, we can if you want. We can go up here on the bridge. Ah, yeah, up here is good. Good luck. I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. Every time, bro. Well, that wasn't very fair. <laughs> oh, good job, dude. It's so funny.